okay so we start by playing skilled pay 69 here now what I want to do against e4 uh is either e5 or c5 Karo Khan also playable but you have to play one of these three moves generally I don't really love the Scandinavian so I'm gonna start with the uh with with, with c5 here my opponent plays knight c3 now there are many different setups I'm gonna go for a classic setup at the lower levels it doesn't really matter that much per se so I'm gonna play knight c6 here and I'm gonna go g6 I think the accelerated dragon is actually one of the best setups you can play as a beginner um so I didn't know the location was much of a factor yeah it is a factor this time it is yeah okay so he castles here so now I have to divide or I have to decide where to develop this knight I think I'm gonna go here in 97 because then I can thrust with d5 in the center of the board so yeah as far as the world wrapping and blitz goes uh it, it location really matters a lot okay let's go here I want to play for d5 I also want to just castle my king now I've got the good development um let's just castle keep following the basics he goes here hitting the pawn now I have two ways to guard the pawn I can go d6 or b6 I'm gonna go b6 so again I'm not I, I really want to thrust with d5 here so I'm gonna go b6 to guard the pawn and I'm gonna go d5 and everything's protecting it and I can start pressing forward in the center of the board you can divide or decide it's all the same yeah he goes a3 okay let's play d5 let's take with the pawn now I open up the scope I can play d4 I've got a nice chain of four incoming also knight of five to hit the bishop please be born now this hangs the knight which is why you have to be very careful if your opponent ever fian cheetos the bishop I'm not actually going to take the knight here I'm going to play d4 because this is a much more common theme you'll see in beginner games to try and fork the pieces in the middle of the board with some pawns so let's take the knight bishop guards the pawn he doesn't see the long diagonal and now the sniper just eats the other sniper so now we're up two pieces he goes rook b1 at this point what I want to do now that I have an extra bishop and knight is mainly I don't care so much about the pawns I want to trade off pieces so I'm going to go here force a trade of either the knights he'll either take or I'll take or I'll take the bishop so I want to reduce the the material on the board outside of the pawn so he goes there so I'll trade the knight for the bishop again I have two extra bishops here so trading down is a good thing let's go knight c6 so now I'm threatening to win the knight he goes rook b3 I will just take the knight here knight d4 is also winning because I forked the rook and the queen so let's take the knight we'll hit another basic theme in a second after rook takes bishop which is I can take and this is a very common thing in theme in beginner games where there's a queen pinning a pawn and you have ideas like bishop takes pawn or even just bishop here where if he has to push you win the rook or you check me now he finds queen f3 which is a good move here what I'm going to do is just a simple simple move I'm going to play bishop d7 retreat the bishop and guard my knight on c6 goes rook e1 let's go knight d4 attack the queen the rooks guard each other here and now I want to I want to go bishop c6 and try to meet him on this long diagonal goes queen e3 now again as I said before the main goal trade off the pieces so I'm happy to trade off the queens let's trade off the rooks here if he takes the pawn I have 92 with fork and the king and the rook so he trades the rooks now he has one lone rook on the board 92 just ends the game I win the rook and now he just has a bunch of pawns but pawns without other pieces are very very harmless goes g3 okay let's go um check he has to scoot over I'm gonna go check I'm gonna try to get the classic lobster pincer checkmate if I can here with bishop g4 and bishop f3 wow he stopped it very annoying let's go here I don't want him playing f3 I'm gonna go knight d1 win this pawn and win the game actually no let's go here okay I think I'm gonna go rookie one go for the classic lobster pincer let's go here stop the escape and now I have rookie h1 which is just checkmate okay next game okay now one thing that I, I always say is obviously I have my own set of openings that I recommend for beginners you don't necessarily have to follow them but this is essentially based off of how I learned chess as a kid the openings that my stepfather taught me from the very from a very young and early age many of these lessons by the way that you'll see with openings that I play in these uh, beginner arenas are actually in his book which I do recommend taking a look at it's called best lessons of a chess coach like this exchange Carl Khan which he taught me to play as a kid there, there are quite a few games in his book which have examples in this opening um so I'm gonna go C3 this exchange Karo Khan here I create this nice Bishop here on D3 I also activate this Bishop this was also played by the famous former world ch chess champion Jose Araul Kappa blanket um from Cuba so uh um we get Queen B6 here I he's trying to win the pawn I'm gonna play 
This guy is fairly decent. I'm going to go queen c2. Normally, queen b3 is a better move to trade the queens, but I've got the two bishops. Bobby Fischer also played this, I think, quite a bit as well. So I'm going to go queen c2. Very simple development. Bishops are out early, and I want to go one, two, and three. And then I've got harmony with the bishops. Knights develop, and it's a very, very easy position to play. Yeah, so let's go here. Castles. And now I finished my development. The knights are developed. I can jump with a knight. Bishops on good squares. Let's bring the rook over. Again, very, very nice play. Eventually, at some point, I want to do a classic rook lift and mate him on the king's side because all of these bishops are aiming towards where his king is. So I can take with a pawn or the bishop. If I was playing a professional game, I'd actually take with a pawn here. But at the beginner level, should I really do? I'll do it anyway, just to show you guys a point. The reason I'm taking with the pawn is that I can activate the knight and get it to d4. But also, I can now lift the rook. And the pawn, if black ever tries to play f6, I can trade. And there's some serious weaknesses on the king's side here. I don't have the patience to read books anymore, but that's cool that your dad wrote chess books. Well, I guess society is going Society is uh, going to the dogs if you, if you can't read books. I'm going to go rook e3 and rook g3 here, doing the classic rook lift. All kinds of pressure on the king side. A lot of pressure. What is a book? I know. What is a book? Exactly. Yeah. Am I going to be following the European Club Cup? Yes, you guys. We are following. I cover a little bit earlier. We'll cover a little bit later. We'll co be covering it periodically throughout the day. Um, not straight through because, frankly, it's a very slow and boring event because it's classical chess. Um, but we will pop in here and there. So let's see what he does here goes d4 I'm gonna go here and again now I'm lining up everything we had this in the previous game here this idea of taking a pawn due to the pin and you'll notice that everything is headed towards the king side I can even go queen d1 and queen g4 or queen h5 everything is aiming towards where where uh, not prince where king charles is and king charles is getting checkmated so he goes bishop h4 attacking the rook I will just play rook g4 keep the rook on the file and he's got massive problems here so you get books you ever read Agassiz's biography no but I'm, I'm working on a book project and that will I probably will read that book just to get some ideas of, of various stories that I intend to tell in my own book obviously not at the same degree but uh but I think you guys get the point <laughs> um so we get g5 played here um I, I guess I'll go knight f3 yeah it's like um let's hit the bishop on h4 yeah just just imagine just imagine the wild the wild salaciousness if there's some story that I talk about like Dude, I, I haven't read the book, so I know, but I feel like there were books about Agassi doing like, uh, doing like, doing a uh, crack before tennis match or something. Yeah, you, you, I can just imagine it's like, it's yeah. And so here I was in London and I, play, I was playing as Magnus Carlsen the next day, but you know what? I went out, I went out all night and I went and did like, I went and had, had, had a lot of fun and uh, yeah, something like that. But anyway, we get H5. <laughs> <laughs> um now my opponent's pushing p on the kings the truth comes out yeah exactly um uh i, I could have played g3 but after g3 he still has h5 to trap my rook as well um so i get h5 um now the thing is he's pushing all these pieces in front of his king side so there are a couple ways to win this game i'm trying to figure out what is the most like logical way at the beginner level um so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take with a rook. I'm going to sack the rook with the rook takes pawn. He will take. I'll take back with the knight. And basically what I'm aiming for is after takes, I can create a fossil with a checkmate, but I can also lift the queen over to the king side immediately too. So now I have this idea to create the fossil mate, but I also can just swing the queen over and go for mate immediately as well. So I, I have two very simple ideas here. Goes there. Now, bishop b5 is a very cute way to win because now I threaten to win the bishop and I also threaten to fossilize him with the checkmate on h7. Let's see yeah, this is just winning here because it looks like a free bishop and I'm mating him on h7. Now, the former world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik actually blundered a checkmate like this on h7 against, I believe, Hydra, if I'm not mistaken, I was at Hydra or was it Deep Junior, one of the programs where he embarrassingly blundered this mate and won. Um, take the bishop. Do I still play chess 960? Yes, I do play it. So now I take the bishop. Now I have a bishop and a knight for the rook. And with a bishop and a knight for a rook, six is better than five, at least according to the math that I grew up with. I don't know, Common Core might say something different, but at least the math that I grew up with, six is worth more than five. 
So I'm going to take with a pawn here to prevent the knight jumps. No, no squares in the center for the knight to jump to. And I'm going to bring the queen over to the king side eventually. So I'll drop the bishop back. No reason not to. And just slowly going to bring everything over to the king side. Let's bring the queen over. Going for the checkmates here with the right triangles, of course, as well. And it's starting to look pretty simple. Waiting for a move, he goes there to guard the pawn. Now I'm going to bring the knight back. I guard this pawn, but I also threaten to go knight f6 and create a bastion here with the knight. Am I sure Arjun gets 300k a year? The, the article, the articles that I read about a sponsorship said that he's getting $1.5 million over five years. Uh, I could be wrong on that, obviously, but I'm pretty sure the articles I read about a sponsorship said that he's getting $1.5 million over five years which is great, by the way, um, shows the world of difference between India and the U.S. It also speaks volumes about how Ambishi was talking about me, and he said that I, I, I surely was doing fine. I mean, it's completely different when you compare India and the U.S. Let's go check and hit the king. Um, and I'm going to go Bishop H6. Yeah, like, I mean, if, if you get sponsorships like that in the U.S. even, that would be amazing. But those sponsorships do not exist whatsoever. So like when Vichy did, did some interviews and he was talking about me and he's like, he's saying that I was doing fine anyway. I was doing fine, but I wasn't doing great. Like, you know, all the Indians are taken care of. I think it's fantastic. Uh, but when you won the Olympiad, you got 500K. <laughs> oh my God. You're trolling, I hope. Um, you're, you're trolling, I hope. No, uh, when, when uh, I'll tell you guys, when... Um, when when the Russians when the Russians were trying to win the chess Olympics like in the late 2010s, if they won, they would all get I think fifty thousand dollars is what they would get. Um, when the Armenians won the Olympiad, I think in 2000, 2006 and two thousand eight, uh, I think they got land, they got private, they, they got land. I think they got like Mercedes cars and everything else. Um, they got all that. When we won the chess Olympics in Baku, Azerbaijan in two thousand and sixteen, I believe it was or eighteen, whatever the year it was. Uh, I think what we got for winning was we each got a bonus of, I think, $5,000. Um, so, yeah, uh, exactly, you guys. Thank you. Anyway, back to the game. I'm going to take with the knight to win the, take with the knight here to win this knight on G7. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just take the knight. Yes. We, we got $5,000 bonus for winning the gold medal. <laughs> $500,000 is good. Let's go check. Uh, he's gonna, he has to go king f8, and then I go queen d2, and I, I have multiple ways of checkmating him here. Uh, after queen e2 all, all roads lead to rome the bishops cover the critical squares and it's gg yeah let's go check and mate next move all right it wasn't a real gold medal either obviously um do i have it i don't think i have it in this house let's go knight f3 uh he goes to e5 i'm just gonna take the pawn and let's drop back and now we just start pushing the center of the board immediately 5k is a lot of money sure but if the russians won the gold medal they each got 50k when the armenians won they got land and a car like it's just it's not on the same level at all so that's why like when Vishy was talking about me and he's acting like i was doing great or something uh, i was doing fine but it's a much different world here in america like we do not get support the top players do not get a whole lot of support um let's go c3 and guard the pawn big white center here Let's go uh, bishop to e2 and cast. Americans are bad. They only like money. Yes, thank you. Go knight d2. Um, I, who, who, wait, who did you play for? I played for the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's just cast and play e5. I don't know how long ago the Vichy interview was, but he, he was saying that I was doing like very... He essentially was saying I was doing completely fine, even before the whole streaming thing. And I was doing fine. But again, no guarantees. I mean, you don't you don't have pensions. You know, you have to pay for your own health care. It's very different. Like, if you you can only imagine, like, if um, let's play H3 attack the bishops, I'm happy to trade pieces. You can only imagine if Fabiano, myself, Levana, all of us were getting 300k a year sponsorship deals. Uh, it'd be completely different. Yeah, Vichy read that he car is 50 million. Yeah, probably. Um, let's go knight to and hit the bishop. I mean, I don't hold it against Vichy, obviously, because like his perspective is is India centric, um, which is fine. And obviously, India takes care of their takes care of their chess players, which is fantastic. But here in America, it's nothing like that. Um, have I read about the number one Indian tennis player with zero support? Well, that is sad because tennis is a much better game than chess, if we're being honest. Um, the fact that India supports their chess players and they don't support the tennis players is pretty sad. Um, let's go d5 here i can take the knight on c6 next move um although i think i, I think i think novak Djokovic spoke about that recently right he did, he did some interview where he said like top 400 in tennis make a living but everyone else basically is living off of scraps 
Uh, let's just trade the knight here. Let's go knight d4 here. Um, and I'm happy to trade off all the pieces. Ryan likes just asked where I go wrong last game. Where you went wrong um, was very specifically when you traded the knights on e5. That was a big mistake. You, you, the whole age, actually, h6 was a mistake. You should have gone bishop h5, g6 to keep the pawns on f7, h7. You should have gone for this so you could capture and keep, keep a pawn on g6. Uh, let's go knight e3 attack the queen here i'm just going to take the bishop next move if i were to take the bishop he could take the knight and that would be winning but knight e3 hits the queen first and then i just capture for free oh wait he hung his queen too whoops i missed that let's take the queen okay so now we take the rook and i'm just going to trade everything down i'm going to play knight d5 and sack the horse so that i can trade off a rook as well go check trade off the rooks and now he just has a lone bishop i'm going to force the bishop off and with just pawns the rook will, will the rook will mop up the rest go rook c1 stop the pawn push as long as he didn't get the pawns going then he can't do anything let's go g4 maybe f4 just going to use the pawns on the king side here as long as he can't get a pass pawn here in the center uh it's just winning let's go here take with the rook yeah jokovic was talking or joko jo Djokovic was talking about uh men and women he's not talking about the top 400 men he's talking about men and women let's go check and take and now I can just push the pawn get a new queen and win the game go here take the pawn just trying to collect I guess I'll go here and I'll mate him on the queen side eventually let's go check and mate there we go all right next game um best way to learn end games there are um there are many end game books out there there's a madness book that i read i think there's a Selman book by the way rest in peace jeremy Selman. Uh, i'm gonna play d4 this time beginner level i think it's best oh i'm playing 2000. i think it's best to play the advanced french generally we get queen b6 here uh i could play bishop d3 but i'll play the traditional bishop e2 system with castles very very straightforward Silman passed away yeah Jeremy Silman died recently he died about I think a week ago maybe I'm gonna go knight a3 now because now the knight's in the way if we trade he can't eat the knight and I want to put the knight on c2 to reinforce the central pawns as I was talking about in the Magnus game from the European Club Cup so knights guard all these central pawns I'm gonna castle now what I think of Queen g4 in the advanced French is playable but not not great it goes rook c8 I think I'm gonna play um Bishop d3 is playable because after takes 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 I have Bishop e3 here so just to illustrate it if he were to take I trade one set and then I go Bishop e3 then he goes here and I b4 to overload him on the diagonal I really hate to play this with white okay let's go g4 again as I said the pawn is poison here can I win a game with not playing natural developing moves of course I could but again just because I can do it doesn't mean I should it's like it's like asking it's like you could ask Roger Federer to play me with a wooden racket and yes he could play me with a wooden racket and and just destroy me but that's beside the point because nobody else could do that so let's go b4 here he, he walked into the poison trick here and I win the game so uh, he walked to the trick if he takes he loses the bishop here I just take yeah um Hansen is smirving at number four in the arena I don't see Hansen let's take and now I just take and now as you'll see I just have one extra tower here so I slowly bring the piece into the center of the board <laughs> can Roger better be play without a racket only hitting the ball in his hands that's a good one um but yeah so that's the thing it's like yes I could win games doing just about anything at this level but that that's not something that's going to benefit you guys the viewers and so like I could do it for the wow factor or something just for just to smurf but again if I'm doing an arena like I, I and I beat someone it's not really great to, it's not really a, a good feeling because you want them to learn something from the game and if they play against it like a 1500 and they it's like I could do anything and win the game but then when the 1500 tries and do it does it they just lose um so it's not applicable at this level so let's take the pawn activate the rook I just have to be a little bit careful because my king is a little bit weaker with the pawns let's go here hit the bishop not takes because then after d4 he opens up the scope he wants to go d4 and open the scope so I don't really want to allow that uh I don't actually have a way to stop it necessarily so I guess I'll just take I'm probably going to sack the rook and just get rid of this bishop here because I still have an extra bishop and an extra pawn to push so it should be pretty straightforward to win 
Bed could be with a ping pong paddle, if we're being honest. Um, no, I don't think so, Act. Definitely not. But but that's not really the point. Um because with a ping pong paddle, I mean you you can't generate you can't generate. Actually, I wonder with a ping pong paddle, could you could you could you actually hit a tennis ball with a ping pong paddle? I wonder. Let's go queen d2 and maybe bishop d3. Or maybe rook a one's an idea too. I have an extra bishop here, so essentially what I want to do is play something like this, go after the pawn, maybe push the pawn. As long as they really get to push the pawns in the center of the board, I should win. Do I play tennis? I took lessons for about uh, for about six or seven years. <laughs> it's hard to survive in chess if you're not a GM. I mean, it's impossible. Although there are many people who um, who are who are not GMs who actually make a better living than grandmasters from teaching. We get e5 here. He's trying to push the pawns in the center. I'm gonna go here to really line up this diagonal. Uh, years, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did, yeah. No, I wasn't talking about Levy actually. I was, I was saying in general for many years, even before the whole chess boom, I'm gonna go here to like fossilize them. There are many, there are many people who are like feeding masters and masters who earn more than GMs. Like, like my, uh, like my stepfather, I think actually, even in the pre-pandemic world, he was earning more money than most GMs. Let's go here and play Queen F6 and put pressure on this diagonal. He's earning more teaching chess in New York City than, than most grandmasters. So. Okay, he goes King G7. Let's go here. I'm trying to get in here with like Rook C7. Eventually, I should be winning, but it's still a little bit tricky to win. He goes Queen B6. Good move. Oh, very, very good move, by the way. Um, I guess I'll just go here because if he takes, he loses the pawn. Actually, I just well, that's not a blunder because I can drop back and I guard the Rook, but almost a blunder. Master Chef today? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I'm not actually sure. Not sure. I want to keep it pretty chill. Let's let's go in for the kill. So Rook C8, if he takes, he loses the pawn. Sooner or later, I'm going to infiltrate. Actually, Bishop B5 would have been the best move, but that happens. Mag is up 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah, we'll tune in. We'll tune into the ECC after this. Okay, goes Queen E6. Now I think I get in, right? Let's go here. I'm infiltrating from behind with Queen D8, and this should be checkmate. Yeah, I go g5. Now the king has no escapes, and I'm just hitting him with queen f8, h8, or queen g8. All roads lead to checkmate because the king has no squares. And there's no checks I take with the other pawn. GG. Goes f5. Let's go queen f8, checkmate next game. All right. Get knight f3. Uh, I'm going to try to take more center. I think generally at beginner levels, you should always try to play in the center. I, I think actually playing like these bishop f5 systems, like it's almost like a reverse London in a sense. Systems where you get a bishop outside the chain and then you can activate with multiple diagonals. I feel like it makes a lot of sense to play like that. Guy defended well. Well, he is 2000. So, yeah. Okay, let's go h6. I can put the bishop on h7 here. Let's go bishop e7. I'm just going to castle. I played h6, so if he ever tries to attack the bishop, I retreat and keep it alive on this long diagonal. Now I'm going to go c6 here so that I have more protection of d5 for when he plays the e4 to try and hit the central point. So I have much more protection of the pawn here. Do I think Novak is a tennis coach? I mean, I think it depends on a couple of metrics. Uh, if you look at the pure stats of the most, most Grand Slams one, yes. If you look at the way the game has changed, um, the way the game is better off because Federer existed, I would probably say Federer. I would I would make an argument that more people are in tennis because of Federer than Djokovic. I think that is like pretty much undisputable. I'm gonna go knight a6 here. Not a great move, but I'm going here because if I go here, he's e5, my knight is a little bit unhappy. Here I can still retreat. Um, uh, I guess I'll go knight b4, try to fork the rooks here. There's also a lot of pressure on the central center of the board here. I mean, if you look at the way that the game has changed the popularity of tennis, there's zero doubt that Federer is the single biggest reason. Um, way more than anybody else. Not, not even close. The interest in tennis is so much higher because of Federer. So, so much higher. And the game itself is much better off because you know like Djokovic and Nadal would not be where they are today um, if not for Federer just basically dominating the field. Get knight f1. I'm just going to take and take with the bishop on e4 here. 
he ends up losing a pawn and this already is very very bad magnus up 25 minutes we'll be covering that after after the arena so knight and the pawn are both under attack here or, or sorry knight's not under attack but i could trade pawn on c2 very very weak we also of course have the classic wooden shield as well wooden shield very very good at 93 magnus opponent just blunder i mean his opponent is 2500 his opponent's gonna blunder like let's play 95 here i mean do you really expect magnus to be struggling against 2500s i mean come on it's magnus carlson we're not we're talking about not hans neiman um we have 95 being played here um let's see what wid mad hm plays you could you could trade the knights maybe not again i have an extra pawn here so i'm pretty happy to trade pieces uh and go like bishop h7 or bishop d3 actually you know what i have queen d3 to force the queens off let's just go here and force the queens off immediately because i have an extra pawn in the center of the board can play bishop e4 next move very very nice position i i feel like the nadal federer rivalry made the game magical that's true nadal federer rivalry was was really really hype let's go actually let's tickle the rook here and then go back I'm gonna tickle the rook to take away a square because now there's no knight retreat I don't know if it does anything but it just takes away a square potentially I just have an extra pawn in the center of the board here goes rook d1 good move um I think I just castle there's no kebab here because the knight covers a critical d7 square so it seems like the position should be relatively relatively decent at 95 I'll uh, trade the bishops go here I want to trade the knight for the bishop I have the extra pawn eventually I can kick the knight back build a nice little chain of three maybe as well the 08 Wimbledon final the Australian 2010 the list goes on yeah I mean those finals were amazing actually that's one thing is like I I will say I always loved how Federer played much faster than the other guys like if you look at those finals between Djokovic and Nadal there was the Australian I forget what year it was but that that final was like six hours or something ridiculous like it was so bad that I almost thought I was like why what what is this what when did tennis become chess um so he goes rook d3 uh I'll go here to maybe like offer some trades um but yeah I, I the, like some of those Djokovic Federer or Djokovic and Dahl matches literally went on forever now I'm gonna have, trade all the pieces off rooks and everything and take uh but yeah yeah so I mean that that's the one thing I would say is like I, I mean Federer always played fast and I always liked that I mean obviously the match against Nadal or both matches I think Wimbledon 2007 and 8 I think it was the years blend together eight and nine whatever the two years were um but you know both those five set matches went really really long um well I watched both of them there's one there's one that Federer won where Nadal was trying to break him in the fifth set multiple times like I think early in the fifth set like the first three service games that Federer had because I was watching it live Nadal had break points and he wasn't able to convert um and that's the year that Federer won I don't remember that was seven eight or what the two years in a row were but um I'm gonna go f5 here to fix these pawns on the same color as my dark square bishop so g5 is a move 2017 Nadal Federer was amazing yeah it's funny too because actually 20, 2017 is the one that Federer won right uh was that or was it 2018 when Federer won it was 2017 right uh but I remember it very 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 well actually because uh, yeah all the years blend together but I remember it well because like right as that turn was starting I was actually I was actually on, on a flight um flying business class I forget if it was like it was like Swiss it was like it was I think on Swiss 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 Airlines or something and um and I was going like I, I was talking to the person next to me we were talking about tennis for whatever reason we we're talking about like how amazing it would be if Federer could win another slam and then like two weeks later he he won the Australian Open G4 good move by the way to get rid of the light square pawn here um I think what I need to do is eventually I need to bring, use the king actively and go after the pawns maybe reroute the bishop to another diagonal if I were to play bishop e5 he had knight to a5 which is why I, I didn't play this because I saw knight f5 hitting both of these pawns so now I'm going to reroute the bishop I think to slowly work it around to target the knight on this diagonal it was 92 okay now I think I can trade I can walk with the king bishop guards the pawn and now there should be a way to walk the king in and win these pawns he also can't win any of the pawns on the king side 
So I take, and now I just have too many pawns. The king is just going to gobble. This is actually a lot like playing Pac-Man. Probably the game that I'm best at, by the way. I cut off the knight, no jumps. Um, this is like playing Pac-Man. The king is just gobbling everything here. Takes and B2, B1. Okay, next game we're playing Max Ska, 04, who I've played many times in arenas. Uh, I'm going to play D5 and E6, one of the more solid, one of the more solid pros. He played a good game, very good game. Let's play E6 here. Queen's game declined. Um... Go knight f6. Let's take with the pawn. Play c6. Of course, this was played in the famous game yesterday between Hans Niemann and, of course, uh, Arsenio Nesterov from Russia. Hans got smoked. If you want to take a look at that game, you should watch my recap of Hans Niemann's last two games in the World Junior in Mexico City because this was the exact opening that was played. Nesterov with the black pieces just crushed Hans after Hans let his ego get in the way and he refused to take a draw. So... All right, what is Max Guy going to do here? He can put the knight on f3 or e2. He goes to e2, so let's play knight d7. Same, same opening, exact same opening. Um, Nadal is finished. I think he is too. Let's play rook e8, pressure on the center. I can play h6 here. Uh, I think I think Nesterov played knight f8, so I'm going to play knight f8 too. And then it's like queen c2 and bishop e6 was the game. Now he goes to e4 right away, which I think is a slight mistake because now I can immediately hit the bishop on the central pawn here with knight to e6. Take maximum pressure. A center is very good generally, but the problem with the center is the center is very brittle. And if you lose one pawn, you lose both. And he has all kinds of problems here. And I think he's going to uh, fall apart very soon. He goes d5. Ah, but d5 is a good move because after he takes, he wants to come up with a nice little fossil here with bishop h7. Nice idea. If I take the horse, I actually lose my queen to the fossil. Now, let's go bishop d7 to activate these bishops here. And I should be fine. Let's go. He has queen h5, but I just go g6. So if queen h5, I have g6 to cut him off at the pass. It was queen f3. Very, very good move. But maybe I have knight f4 here. Yeah, I think I have knight f4 here because the knight is pinned. And now e5 is also a weakness as well. So he goes bishop e4. I can take. I think actually, do I take or do I take? I think I take this one. And then I'm going to take this one. And he can't really guard everything. I take, and after knight takes f4, I have queen d4 check, and I hit the bishop, and I should win the game. Hi, Ikaru. What's good, my man? I'm at school at lunch watching. A great day for you to be live as, as usual. Thank you so much. Now, here, temporarily, I'm down a horse, but I'm winning a bishop back, so I will have one extra juicer at the end of the day. So I take with the queen, as we can do from the counting. I have ichi ni san yon go, ichi ni san yon. I have one extra pawn in the end game, so I should, I should be winning here eventually. Let's see what he does. Hey, Igor, I'd love to hear how you rationalize the classic right triangle. has been listening for a few years. I always wonder what exactly you mean by that. Oh, I'm just making it up as I, I'm just making it up as I go along. Um, there's no rationalization to it. I do it because um, it's sort of my way of paying homage to uh, to XQC and all the other content creators who made chess so popular during the boom. There's no rational. There's no logic or rationalization. It's just me being silly, having fun. Let's go rook f5. It's it's not some actual like technique or anything. You know, it's like same thing as when I say the wooden shield. I'm I'm just I'm just going. It's sort of my way of paying homage to all those all the content creators who made chess fun during the pandemic times. I'll trade the rooks. I'll drop back to guard the pawn. Knight is a little bit boxed here as well. Um, my queen is serving as a sun ray and a wooden shield all at the same time. Um, I think I'll just play rook f8 to guard the pawn. So, yeah, I mean, it's my way of paying homage to all the people who really made chess so popular during the, uh, during the pandemic. Um, so it's what I do, yeah. Queen a5, I'm going to go here, hit the rook, hit the pawn. We also have a kebab here on the second rank. This is not a draw in endgame because I have an extra pawn on the board, so it's not a draw. Uh, I have check. It's almost it's almost an ice skater, but he can block with the horse. But then I hit him with bishop e3, and he actually can't stop the material loss here. I was expecting the wooden shield to be in chess books. No, because chess, chess people would never would never do that, even though it's like changed the world of chess. Okay, I could tickle the queen, but then then she goes to f3. So let's trade the trade. Play b6, not hang a pawn here. Uh, now I'm going to go like rook c8, rook c1. I, I also have a kebab with rook c2. Could also just tickle the king. Queen, queen d6 and rook, e, rook c1. Um, 
Okay, let's go here now. The kebab is a very, very serious threat. Rooksy 2 incoming. So the streamers invented the terms, I'll trade the queens, let's go for the kebab, eat the pawns on the on the queen side and win the game. Um, and now I just have too much too much pee that I can push up the board and win the game. So. How far would I travel to play over the board and watch your limit? I mean, it depends on the event, but I would say generally, like the Emirates, I, I'm fine with going to like, go, going to the Emirates, going, going, to, uh, going to Qatar is fine. Uh, I mean, like in the old days, I would go to Russia. Of course, I, I I think that I'll probably never go to Russia ever again in my lifetime. Um, but uh, but I, but I would say like yeah, like I mean, it's it it, it, it I I'd go almost anywhere. The World Rapid is at the edge of the world this year. I don't know where it is. Let's play the um, let's play uh, Sicilian again. I think Sicilian is pretty good. I think Sicilian is one of the best openings. Sicilian, especially the Accelerated Dragon at beginner level, is very, very important. Let's go here. Here to guard the pawn. I'm going to go here in Bishop G7. Wait, why? What happened in Russia? I don't know. They kind of invaded another country. And hundreds of thousands of people have died. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Maybe to you that doesn't matter. But let's go B5, B4 here. My opponent is trying to castle too quickly here, and he's going to get brutalized on the queen's side. Again, you can win as much material as you like, but it, but if you're getting if your king is getting checkmated, if King Charles is getting checkmated, that's all that actually matters at the end of the day. Um, there should be a way to win here. Oh, can I sack the rook? Let's go for the classic rook sack. I've got queen b4, check. Bishop takes c3, and he will have to give up his pokey main, or his king will get checkmated. So there's GG on the spot. Insta GG. Have to be very careful when when you play. This is why I try to actually stress some of the fundamentals because like I could have done exactly what he did with Queen Two Castle and won the game because of the level I'm at. But if I were to do that and then someone tries to emulate it against another player, they would just lose the way that this guy is losing to me. So you have to be very very careful here. Also, why would I give my opponent a draw, you guys? Um, you know, I'm from a, I'm from I'm from a world. I grew up in a world where you had to like you had to perform to get um to get prizes. You know, let's go checkmate. Next game. I grew up in a world where you didn't, you, you know if you're either first or last, you win or you don't win. If you're top three, you get you get your your prize. If you finish in 25th out of 30 people, you don't get some participation ribbon. You don't get you don't get validation for your poor performance. So no, I'm not giving this guy a draw here. Why would I give him a draw? does he deserve does he deserve does he deserve like the uh the 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 ribbon for um for his poor performance no if he actually played well and, and drew the game then yes i would give him a draw um let's play this is the classic portuguese uh variation of the scandinavian it's a gamble let's play knight f3 and d4 c4 says the guy who offered a draw to magus in a winning position Oh, but that was different because that was a bullet game where neither of us were sure and the clock had run out. That, that actually had nothing to do. That was completely different. That's because the clock ran out and I saw the draw. I don't think Magnus saw the win either. Um, but yeah, if you want to say that, say that. Okay, I'm going to go Bishop E2 and play this like a beginner. That was not bullet. Oh, are you trying? Is there a different event? I don't know which event you're talking about. Uh, I'm going to castle and play D4, C4. Do I think Magnus lost his common in the AI Cup against MVL and tried too hard to win? I don't think he lost his. I don't think he lost. I don't think he, he lost uh, his calm. If you want my hot take, I'll give you my hot take about it. No. Oh, you mean no, no. That was the one where I had the queen. I was on the better side there. No, no. You're. T that was. I was on the better side. That was not a pity draw. I was on the right side. Of that I just lost my mind temporarily. No, 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 no. That was, I lost my mind temporarily in that one. No, no, that's completely different. No, my hot take is that I think Magnus actually saw the tour standings and he saw that most likely Nepo, Nepo was going to qualify. Uh, Nepo was going to qualify or Fedose was going to qualify one of the Russian players. And so like, I think he was just kind of a little bit too chill at the start. And then by the time he tried to turn it on, it was too late to turn it on. And Maxime was feeling the vibe. That's my hot take. I think he was sort of way too chill about it. Um, he was way too chill about it. And I think by the time, then, then once it started getting too, then, then once it got serious, he wasn't able to turn it on, kind of, is, is what I felt like. I thought he was just way too chill. He didn't seem angry enough like he normally would when he loses. And I, I think there was probably something subconsciously about like one of the Russians making the final. And then when he wanted to turn it on, like late in the first match, it was like he just wasn't able to do it. 
But I, I think he was just like, he was way too relaxed. And it's like, okay, whatever, like not a big deal. And then when he wanted to, did, did we get a raid by the way? Did I miss a raid from Darks or something? Or did, or did I miss something? Uh, let's play Sicilian again. I'm just going to keep playing Sicilians in this arena. Um, let's play Knight C6 here. And now I'm going to go G6 and Bishop G7. I think the Accelerated Dragon, very, very good opening at the beginner level. Very, very good. Oh, I was playing Darks. He got disconnected. Okay. Uh, in his interview, he said he was happy for MVL, which is which is sus too. Oh, I'm sure he's happy for MVL on a general level, but I think the, I think the thing is that Magnus he, is that at the start he was just like very chill, wasn't wasn't in it, and then like he lost a game, then he drew a game or two. I'm gonna play D6 this time in Knight F6, and then at some point he started getting angry because he's a competitor, of course, and he wanted to turn it on, but it was already too late. Let's go here. I, I, I think because it, he knew that if he didn't win the matches against MVL, MVL would qualify for the tour, tour final. Whereas if he did win against Mac Seaman in one of the matches, that meant one of the Russians, Fedosev or Nepo, would, would make it. And I, w I mean, it's just a take, so like I could be wrong. But my take is that I think he was like, he was like, okay, Nepo getting in, Nepo a Russian, like, and, and all, obviously Magnus doesn't doesn't love doesn't love Nepo as as we know. Um, so. I, th I think he was a little bit too chill, and then when he wanted to turn it on late in the match, he just wasn't able to, and Maxime was on uh, was on fire. I mean, Maxime deserved to win. I don't think he threw it, but I, I think it's just like he was too chill at the start mentally, and then by the time he wanted to turn it on, Maxime was feeling the feeling the rhythm. He was feeling confident after the first match, and uh, he just played great chess. I mean, Magnus also said quite recently that he feels he doesn't he feels weird playing Russians over the board. He did say this quite recently. Uh, we'll trade the queens here and now i think i'm just winning materials so i take take and then i take the pawn and if takes i take takes and work ga no he did say this like Ma magnus legitimately says in an interview that um that like if he feels weird playing uh he feels weird playing he feels like it would be weird playing russians over the board I'm, i might have the i might have the exact phrasing wrong but he said he essentially said that let's play knight c6 and castles i'm just up one pawn andy has the double stack pawns here my internet died, dude. Feels terrible. Yeah, sorry, man. Let's just castle. I'm up a pawn. He's got double pawns here. I can play like rook d8 or e6, knight d5. Let's go here. I want to go knight d5 and build a bastion or reconnect all of d's pawns. Uh, I could trade. But I think I'm just going to go here and create the bastion with the knight on d5. There's also pressure on the pawn on b2. He goes rook c1 excellent move i'm going to take the pawn because i trade uh, here this pawn on c6 is a big weakness so i trade i trade my weakness for one of his pawns and now my pawns are much better here than they were i get rid of the weakness and now i'm going to try to create a kebab on the c file here can you join the tournament if you're a member of the fan club you can um i think i put the link in chat earlier uh, there's a link in chat. We're, it's only 60 minutes left, though, so there's a decent chance you won't play me. But nonetheless, even if you don't play me, you have a chance to play against other players. You have a chance to hone your skills. And this is unrated, so you don't have to worry about your rating, which is very critical. Uh, even playing... I actually, like, my read of the situation, I'm, I'm going to create the kebab here because I don't want to give him, uh, give him an open lane. Uh, as I think you're wrong. I think Magnus is very good friends with Dubob. I don't think he's very good friends with Nepo. I think he's friendly, but I don't think they're like best friends. Dubob, I think he is like very, very close with. But I, I think Dubob is Dubob, of course, is much different than Nepo. We get a4 here. I'm just gonna go king g7, maybe f6 or h6 next move. Go here, kick the bishop. I have f5 to kick the horse. Uh, so we're going to kick the bishop, kick the horse. Dubov is called the Russian goat. Okay. Now he has a dastardly threat of taking the bishop and then playing bishop d4. So I will just trade the knight for the bishop. And I'm going to show you guys why a bishop is better than a horse. Let's go f5 to kick the horse. He only really has two squares. Is Grishuk more funny? I really like Sasha. He's a very nice guy. Oh, it's pretty funny. Never too serious. Uh, I mean, he's one of one of those players who I think, frankly, has gotten screwed over by the whole whole Ukraine situation. But I mean, what to do? Okay, I'm gonna go a6 to fix this pawn on a dark square, so that at some point I can go after the pawn with my bishop. 
I actually I want to go after this. He goes E4. Let's target the pawn and the knight. Of course, we have a wooden shield as well. But Grishuk is pretty chill. Grishuk is very, very chill. I, I like Grishuk a lot. Go here, walk the king up, hit the pawn. I mean, most of those Russian players have essentially just gotten screwed, though, for sure. I mean, they've gotten screwed over by everything that's going on. They don't get invites. They have very few tournaments to play, and it's a very, very, very tough situation. I mean, if you, th if you think about it for, like, the Russian players, like Grishuk and, and, and some of those guys, I mean... First of all, there was COVID, which hurt them a lot because during COVID, nobody could play. So if you weren't able to play in the online tournaments or you didn't retire from chess to become a streamer, uh, it was very, you really couldn't make a whole lot of money from chess during the pandemic. And then to have the second whammy, as soon as the pandemic ends uh, of Russia invading Ukraine, that basically meant that a lot of the Russian players lost effectively five years of their, uh, let's take with check and then take this like the classic yo-yo, just win the pawn, one less pawn on the board. Um, so effectively the russian players lost like five years out of their careers um so yeah very 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 brutal i'm gonna come back and win this pawn on e6 i'm not talking about karyak i'm talking about like the i'm talking about like the grish chucks of the world go here and hit the pawn yeah what is my streaming schedule? I believe we did post on Twitter. If we didn't, we'll post it again. But yeah, you look at like the Grishchuks of the world or like Grishchuk or Vidyugov or um, Fedoseyev, those guys, I mean, very unfortunate for their professional careers because they effectively lost five years of their career between the pandemic and between, between the invasion. So very, very sad. Very, very sad. Let's take the queen. Let's just go here, collect the pawn on a5. Will I ever publish a chess book? Probably not a pure chess book, no. Do I think that Mishra and Neiman have a chance that the US chance will be cool? Uh, I think I think Mishra out of the juniors probably is the best potential right now. I mean, again, he's still very far away and you never know what's gonna happen. But his play has actually impressed me uh, in recent times. So. I mean, I don't think he's going to win, honestly. I mean, I, th I think, frankly, Fabiano and Wesley and, and Levon are, are too strong, but there are chances. Okay, let's play E5 this time. Play, um, okay, he's going to play the Scotch, so I'm going to play the classic Bishop C5, Queen F6 line. Probably the best line is beginner level here. Uh, my opponent does not fall for the classic six-move checkmate like XQC did against Charlie, um, but this is still a very, 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 very flexible setup for black here. I take and threaten mate in one. If you take, you lose the knight. Then your pawns are stacked, which is a problem as well. Why are there so many chess tournaments at the same time? Uh, because the chess world has expanded. Um, and, and frankly, nobody is willing to work together to try and uh, figure it out. I mean, there are too many tournaments. I would just say straight up. I'm going to take with the pawn so I can activate the bishop. Maybe castle. I can go here and castle. Bishop g4 as well. Um, Knight d2 is played. I think I'm just going to develop and castle the king. There's also queen h4. Uh, I'll just castle here. Not the, not the only move I could have taken the pawn too, but he has these double pawns, which are very, very brittle here, which I can go after immediately. I mean, I, th I think mainly what should happen, what would be best is there's some consolidation and some of the, basically if you had half the tournaments but the prize funds are doubled, that would be better than all the tournaments that are going on right now. What are my thoughts on Bulidar Mersin? Very, very good junior player from Russia. I played him in the World Rapid. Another player, he's a junior, of course, so it's slightly different, but another player who has effectively been screwed over. Let's take the free knight and create the kebab. Another player who's been screwed over since he's Russian. Very talented junior player, but because he's Russian, he, um, he, doesn't, have, uh, he doesn't have the opportunities. A very very talented player i think he would be 2700 um if if he could just if he, if he had been able to just play all the turns he won over the last like two three years i think he'd be 2700 for sure but no opportunities because he's russian and he pays the price okay we're gonna play again in advanced french here against max scott with c3 we'll be covering the uh, european club cup again in a second after this arena ends um yeah same thing goes for another very talented player which is uh dennis lazovic from Belarusia. He's a very, very talented junior player, but also a player, wrong country, because Belarus is actively supporting Russia, does not get invites, does not get to play tournaments. He has done well in the online tour events, so uh, I am happy for him having these opportunities, but he has not really been able to play much over the board, so he's been stuck with like a 2560 rating, even though he would easily be 2600 plus if he could play tournaments. So yeah, I mean, the, the kids the kids get punished. Lazovic and Merzin specifically. Uh, thank you, Sam, so ID for the host with 14. Uh, the kids specifically get screwed over because of the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. 
Blazovic and, and Merzen specifically are two very, very good players. Like, I played Merzen in the World Rapid. I drew him. I think he drew me. I think he drew Anish. He drew someone else. And I think he might have beat... I think he beat Shakra and Mamad Yarov as well. So he, he like, he's playing against top 10 players. He drew all three of us. Uh, he did lose to Artemiev, I think. But nonetheless, I mean, he plays like that. Like, it's amazing. So, uh, what about Nesterov? I don't know much about Arsenio Nesterov. Um... I guess I'm gonna go knight e3, knight c2 to reinforce the chain because he's played this a5 move. I don't really mind if he takes a knight on a3. But anyway, yeah. So 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 to answer the questions, okay. Um, I can play knight c2. I can also play b3, which I like to basically break his classic connect five here. So we're gonna break the classic connect five. Um, but, but I think I think what I would say is broadly speaking um yeah I mean the kids have been punished and it, it's sad to see but you know at the end of the day you know wh whether you want to believe in it or not somebody has to pay the price you know it's like I, I could use other situations like let's play night five you know the, the problem with the problem with all the sanctions or, or or these sorts of things in general when you look at the world uh, not to be really political here is that the people who end up getting punished are the average Joes. It's not the actual like elite people. You know, like the, these the, the, these sanctions don't necessarily hurt Putin. They they don't necessarily hurt the billionaires. It's basically they hurt everybody who should not get hurt by them. That's the problem with sanctions, in my humble opinion. Uh, I'm gonna go C4 to protect the knight on B5. Um, you know, it's, it's the same thing with like a country like Iran. Another great example where you have um why don't they change federation yeah you're you're a 15 year old kid yeah let's just change federation let's just move out of the country first of all it requires our parents having the money to leave the country um secondly uh secondly you know like i mean it's a lot like having to pick up and leave a country i mean it's it's a it's it's a, it's a big sacrifice i mean i, I it's, it's a huge sacrifice to have to do that um Let's just play h4. I want to stop the, the push on the king side. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what? 15 year olds just, yeah, pick up and leave the country. Easy. Your parents have to have some money to do it. Like, yeah, let's go to h5. Um, yeah, just leave five. I, I know, just leave. I mean, the problem is nobody remembers history anymore. So they, they don't remember the history of America either. It's like, you know, people forget all the hardships that were required for all those people who got on the boats and left Europe to come to the US. Whether, whether it's the Irish during the Great Potato Famine, whether it's, you know, re religious persecution, whether it's around the time of World War II, all those people coming to coming to Ellis Island, you know, to, to get away from, from all their troubles. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's just so easy, right? Society is going to the dogs. Nobody studies history anymore. Let's play Knight History and Rookie One. Um, actually, no, let's go here and hit the pawns in the center. He's got all these weak pawns here. Yeah. How come your IQ is 102, more like 182? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, people forget. People forget. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, though, it's, you know, like Iran's a good example where, like, the, I think there are more sanctions on Iran than any other country in the world. And who suffers? I mean, the 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 the, the rich people don't suffer at all. It's the uh, it's the average Joes who get punished because the inflation just crushes what little money they make. I mean, when inflation is you know fifty thousand percent, and maybe it's not fifty, maybe it's like eighteen thousand. But nonetheless, yeah, like it, you know, the the people get punished for the, for the crimes of the governments. You know, play rookie one here. A lot of pressure, even though I'm down upon here. Tons of pressure on the center of the board. ATK how? Sanctions, baby. Sanctions. The currency is toilet paper. Uh, I'm going to go here to hit the bishop and hit the knight on g5. Is Ding Li Ren retired? I don't know what Ding is up to. I'm going to go here again. Pressure on the knight. No participation trophies. Even if you want it to be 2023, I grew up in a world where you get rewarded for good playing chess. You don't get rewarded for just showing up. Uh, I can take with the bishop for the knight. I'm going to take with the bishop here. Oh, wow. He found a good idea. Maybe. Not really. Goes knight f7. Um... Let's come up with an idea. I actually don't have a good idea here. I guess I'll go rook c2 to guard the knight. I also had knight d5, I think, but whatever. Let's just take the pawn, hit the queen. Let's take tag. I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. And he's got a weak pawn. I should win here. Goes rook e8. Okay, let's see. I'm going to go here to hit the pawn on on d5 
Did I th ever think about running for office? No. Why would I ever do that? Uh, let's just take the pawn because I can fork the rook and the king and then GG. Why not? Good D5. Start pushing the P. We've got the wide peepos here. Um, I just walk the king and I just start pushing the P. What? I meant to go to G4. Where did my king go? Go here. Check. I go here. Oh, wow. I blundered. Hilarious. Okay, let's go check. Go G4. Now I just push the P up the board and win the game. Go here and take. This also works. Go here. Hit the pawn. Just walk the king. You can't really keep an eye on everything here. Let's go here. Why do you count pawns? You can just see it under your name. Uh, because I play chess seriously. That's why. I don't need a gimmick like the number under the board. You know, when you play over the board chess, you guys, I don't think there's a little sign next to the board that says plus three. Is there? Is there? Is there a sign next to the board? Like when I'm playing over the board, is there a little sign that says plus three? No, of course there's no sign that says plus three. So you got to be proper about it, you guys. Let's play knight three, knight c3. There is a sign. Yeah, when you go play chess, there, there's there's some there's like there's like a, there there's like it's like the boxing girls. There's like there's a boxing girl holding up a sign that says plus three every time you're ahead, right? Thank you. Let's play h4, h5, and kick the bishop away. Let's go knight e5 and hit the bishop. Yeah. Anyway. That might make chess much more popular, by the way. But anyway, um, let's play d4 and bishop d3 here. <laughs> um, let's go. Uh, let's go c3 and bishop c4. Um, activate the bishop. Maybe queen b3. Maybe castles and rook e1. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go here and bishop f4. I've got great b shops. Uh, I actually trapped this queen. I just win the game. Actually, e5. I have knight f5 also to to further hit everything. Queen's got no squares on the diagonals. Uh, the cleanest way is to just take the extra piece, though. There would be a lot more blunders. Yeah, exactly. So we're going we're gonna to finish this game. Then we're going to cover the uh, European Club Cup. Uh, Magnus Carlsen playing against Har Ravi, Ravi, Shank Ravi Shankar. Or so no, that's... Sorry, wrong person. That's the... That's the uh, Sitar guy, wrong person. Let's play bishop h6, hit the bishop at the knight, finish the game quickly. Um, let's just go here. Massive pressure because of the diagonals. Everything is just crashing through here. Okay, sack the queen temporarily. I have a lolly on g7. He's actually losing because of everything. Everything just wins. So I'm going to use the Russian very quickly, uh, and then we'll be right back and we'll cover the Magnus game. So.